and welcome to TCC Team Nicaragua. I'm Ed Taylor, Assistant Professor of Broadcast Journalism at TCC. Tulsa Community College has offered service learning trips to Nicaragua through our Global Education Department for five years now. Our partner there is Just Hope, a nonprofit organization that happens to be based here in Tulsa. The nursing program was the first to partner with Just Hope. Our dental hygiene program followed the next year, providing teeth cleaning and dental care education. And I've taken several journalism students down to Nicaragua to document what is going on. And finally, last but certainly not least, Heidi Rieger, associate professor of music at TCC, got involved. Yeah. Glad you're here, Heidi. Uh, it started out as kind of a music trip. It's morphed into a fine arts trip. And so uh, I just want to thank you for being here. And I also want to thank Karen Fox, our artist on the trip. And Sarah Bryant was one of our musicians. They are also here joining us today. Thank you all very much for uh, being um, a part of the program today. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, first of all, let me ask one of the students. Uh, Karen, I'll just start with you. How did you get involved in the trip? Um, I uh, saw a flyer posted around in the C4C building here at TCC, and I was looking to have a study abroad experience in my time at TCC, so it just kind of jumped right out at me, and I emailed Heidi, and it went from there. <laughs> and Sarah, what about you? We had actually talked about her previous year there, Heidi and I, and she said she wanted to bring some students down, and so I went last year and loved it and fell in love with Nicaragua and came back this year. That was very brave of you to do that <laughs> for a second year, especially uh, after you kind of find out what's going on the, the first time. Tell us a little bit about uh, fundraising. Did you have any difficulty raising funds? Or? Um, we did some like group fundraising. So we did like a couple bake sales. Um, we did something at the Tulsa's largest garage sale. And then a lot of us had GoFundMes or friends and family that helped us out. That's what I did. <laughs> it went really well this year. I thought I raised more than half my funds, and the bake sales were surprisingly efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. but <laughs> Everybody likes sweets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your worldview. Did the did the trip to Nicaragua change your worldview at all? Um, I think for me, um, it didn't really take a dramatic shift. It just took a little bit deeper nuances, and I um, kind of got to move what I had learned in my mind into my heart got to experience it and so it kind of deepened made it richer my worldview I had never left the US until I went last year and it, it definitely changed my worldview because you can talk about poverty and you can see pictures of it but until you're there with the people you just you can't imagine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what it's really like until you're really there for me so it definitely has broadened it and I think made it better <laughs> okay mm -hmm. Heidi let's talk a little bit about your involvement this was your third trip uh, to Nicaragua the United Church of the Valley of Murrieta California started doing these music trips several years earlier I'm not exactly sure how, how did you get involved with those guys well, in the spring of 2013, I was approached by Leslie Penrose, uh, the director of Just Hope, through Doug Price, our uh, dean of global ed. Um, they were Leslie was looking for a way to partner in the arts and in music and wanted to have a music faculty um, go to Nicaragua. And I've always wanted to do that, so I jumped on and fortunately had a passport and went and worked with uh, Lynn, the director there. That was the first time I met Otoniao Flores, mm -hmm. who is the master marimba player. And mm -hmm. so I worked with them, just kind of assisting in their music camp that uh, I think they were in their fourth or fifth year at that point. Yeah, um, uh, that was a good camp too, it seemed like. They, and the way they had those camps set up is uh, the, that church stays at one school the entire week, right? right. And, and you've kind of changed that a little bit. Um, but first of all, let's talk about your trip with students in 2014. Right, so the next year I went back with four students, um, Sarah being one of them, and we assisted in that same camp, so we were still in the very central part of Chakra Seca, um, helping and teaching the same children throughout the whole week. Ha ended with a performance on Friday morning in the church as well as um, in, at the school there. We worked closely with Otonio Flores. Um, in fact, that previous fall he had come and visited Tulsa and that's how some of our students got involved um, in that trip. And then this uh, more recent trip we decided to include 
art as well as music. We also had you and a couple of photography <laughs> students. Um, and we also decided to go out to some of the more rural uh, schools that had not been exposed to mm -hmm. music and art. So I had eight students this year and we went out to students to work with students who had uh, not really had music or art in their curriculum. Let's talk a little bit about that performance. It's what we're seeing right now, but um, w the students are learning songs during the course of that first week and then the performance on Friday. Could you kind of expound about that a little bit? Or? Sure. Some of the songs were, are, might be songs that come from their culture, but a lot of those songs are new. Um, so the the concert at the end of the week was a combination of Otoniel playing, uh, the music uh, teacher you see in the background here, Abe Miel, singing some of the songs with the students. They had marvelous voices, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the students got a chance to be exposed to keyboard, uh, beginning ukulele, um, the recorder. And so we did some very um, basic chords on the ukulele, and that's what you're seeing right now as they quartered along with some of the songs they had learned. So the concert was for uh, the parents and uh, a lot of the townspeople, and there's the director, Lynn, right there. And it seemed like um, there was a lot of their family that came to watch the performance, yeah. and it's kind of a, a neat way to end the week, I thought, the, the way they have it set up. Yeah. You, you've talked a little bit about Atoniel Flores Wong. Uh, he's a national treasure in Nicaragua. He's a well-known marimba player. Uh -huh. His father, uh, Tun Tun, taught him, um, and uh, he lives in Managua, and he has taught for many years there. So it, it's amazing to have him um, as a national treasure and a teacher and a, an amazing musician working with these kids. And the first time we saw him, he was uh, tuning his yeah. marimba. We just met him at this point, yes. just minutes He's earlier. Tuning the marimba that he had built uh, we're working on making that marimba available to more students um, throughout the year. I know that uh, I, I thought it was fascinating. He had just he took the thing completely apart and and was you know uh, taking some wood off of it here and there and somehow managed to put it all back together and it sounds great. He strings it back together and it's a little it's laid out similar to a keyboard like our marimbas but it's slightly set up slightly differently so when he played on mar our marimbas here it was a little little different there you can see him stringing the uh -huh. keys together. Yeah that was a, a he worked on that thing three or yeah. four hours that first day we were there it was it was amazing to watch him do that yeah. and uh, how it all kind of came together so so quickly. He's an amazing musician, uh, yeah. incredible ear, worked with some of our musicians here in Tulsa when he visited and they were all very impressed. That's a, that's a, was my next comment was he's such a good musician and he seems to be able to just pick up any instrument that it happens <laughs> to be around. <laughs> yes, he's one of those musicians and yet he's also um, ed very educated. He can read, you know, he's a, just a, to complete professional, amazing musician, and it's it's and he's a joy to be around. He works so well with the kids mm -hmm. and with our college kids. Yeah. Um, so he's he's a wonderful person, and we hope to get him back here sometime and work with him again next yeah, time. How, how is it that uh, he came along to get involved in the in the camps? I think I believe he was hired as a guest musician. One of the, in one of the earlier years uh, with the Church of the Valley, United Church of the Valley, uh, brought him in on one of their music camps. And actually, I'm not sure if this was the first year he was involved with that camp or not. Um, but that's, I'm not sure how he was chosen, other than he was a well-known marimba player. Right, yeah. And not only that, but um, it, he's a professor at the University in Managua, is that correct? He has worked at the university. He's also worked um, with kids at a conservatory type of school there um, and a couple other schools. I'm not exactly sure where he's teaching now, but he is really wonderful with the kids. He really is. I've, I've seen this now about, um, seen him do this with maybe a half a dozen different kids and and uh, he's just so uh, incredible and so, so um, detailed with them and usually by the end of the day they're playing the they're marimba playing a little bit. something it's amazing <laughs> yeah and what's amazing is he can teach our students without using words he just plays the music and shows our students how to to play and 
you know, it, that's the great thing about music. It, we don't even need words to do that. I saw so. it one time when he was a, you foiled him a little bit by uh, bringing out a violin that didn't have any frets on it, and so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's he's trying to learn a few violin lessons. So we we exchanged a few lessons. I learned a, a little marimba tune, and he learned something on the violin. <laughs> Yeah, he's a lot of fun. He's, he's nice he to have around there. So that's a little bit of the background about how TCC got involved. Uh, at least the music department got involved in Nicaragua. Uh, we'll be right back to talk with Heidi and the students about this year's Fine Arts Camp. Hi, and welcome back to TCC Team Nicaragua. This year's music trip to Nicaragua expanded into a fine arts trip adding art and photography to it. And Heidi, if I could uh, ask you real quickly, why did you decide to do that? Well, a couple of reasons, really. One is to try to attract a more uh, wider array of our TCC students and get some of our art students involved in, in the trip down there. The other is that, really, we want to develop a, an art camp. And in at the university, uh, in Leon, all music, art, and dance is under a department called the Department of Culture. So it kind of makes sense to mm -hmm. just combine all of the art forms into one camp. It gives us a little more diversity, a lot more activities to do with the kids. So that we could teach a dance in one little group and work on rhythm games in another and paint a mural in another group. So yeah. it was nice diversity. Karen, let me ask you um, about, your, uh, about the trip. Uh, did you talk with Heidi about what you were going to do while you were there, or, or is it just something you kind of developed on your own? Um, I kind of, being the only fine artist that went on the first trip, I kind of did kind of come up with this idea of doing murals. Um, I knew that lay, that the country had a rich mural history, like when I looked into it, and I thought it was something that would be easy to bring over and do with, with the kids. So the supplies that uh, that you brought, well, did you purchase all those? Or? Um, no, it came out of kind of our fund that we had for the trip. Okay. Like donations Fundraise. and stuff like that. So tell me about this mural right here. Um, this was probably one of the best days of my whole life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really happy to look at this. Um, we had uh, went to a school where the kids had done a mural on the inside. Um, and you'll see um, this uh, teacher here. Um, and then there's another teacher that you'll you'll see pull up. Um, and they wanted to kind of do a painting demonstration. And they kind of just took me outside and together we collaborated on this um, giant mural. There's Frankie on the left. Yeah. Um, he's a, a, an amazing teacher who uses basically art therapy techniques in his classroom. Um, and so it was just a, a really cool moment. Um, the kids took a big picture in front of it, and that's what they were going to use to promote their school at their, um, how their schools were set up um, at a big community grading. And there's everybody there in front of the mural. There's a picture of uh, the best day of Karen's life. That's the best yes. day of my life. That, yes. was a, that was a fun school. They, they were all very uh, engaged in it, yes. it seemed like. And, yes. and you could tell at that particular school that those, that mm -hmm. those teachers had worked they with them. They used a lot of yeah. art in their classroom. It was yeah. really great. Uh, Sarah was one of our musicians. You yeah. returned. I did. And uh, so just talk a little bit about uh, this trip and maybe compare it to the one last year when you were at that for a week compared to uh, taking the music out into the out into the campo is what Leslie calls it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was really great. I enjoyed this year a lot. This year I taught mainly ukulele and some rhythm games with the kids and it was a lot of fun. The kids loved the ukulele. They just wanted to hear it and touch it and they actually picked up on it pretty easily but um, this year I enjoyed a lot. I had a lot more freedom with my lesson plans. We met a couple of times before we left and put together what we could teach the kids and what levels we thought they might be at, at the towards the end. And uh, we got to play some shows for them. That's what is on the screen right now. And they loved that. That was that was a lot of fun. I think uh, the violin's not an instrument that they've seen a lot of in Nicaragua, no. it didn't seem like to me. No, they wanted to see what it felt like and what it was made of, and they were really en enthusiastic about the violin. 
And this was the the first of the camp, and you guys did a little concert for them. And yeah, uh, here's here you are with a group of ukulele players. Yeah, we could teach them a couple of songs that they knew that we had found out about beforehand. We put together so that that was really fun, and and they were so proud of themselves when they could finish a song. It was yeah. you could just see it in their eyes mm -hmm. that they had just they'd done something. Yeah. And they were proud of it. I thought it it. Uh, um, just being there for two days, you, it, it got them, it kind of uh, planted a seed in a yeah. lot of kids, mm -hmm. I would think, more than anything. Oh, yeah. They they were all wanting to, us to come back soon and see them again and play some more music. <laughs> and Abi Mael, uh, explain that a little bit, because uh, he's, he's a, right. a roving music teacher for that particular area of, of Nicaragua. Right. Abe Miao is the only music teacher that's paid in that area, and he actually has two schools that he goes to, Mary Knoll, which is the elementary school uh, where we had the camp the last two years, and then he works with another school. Um, Abe Miao was very crucial in this coordinating with these other schools in the, the more rural areas. Um, he had to coordinate with the teachers, and it was great to have, to really feel like we were working as a team with him. So with Abi Miao and Otonial and myself and the students, we had a great um, collaborative effort. And he was, he also had some former students come and perform for the younger kids so that they could see where they might be in a couple years. Yeah. Um, so he's done an amazing job with the kids there. Tell me a little bit, you touched on it earlier, but um, you were able to talk to a, a professor at the University in Leon, and uh, can you uh, divulge anything about that? <laughs> well, uh, one day Leslie came up to me and said, well, as things work out in Nicaragua today, we have a, an opportunity to meet with the director of the Department of Culture at the University of Leon, and the Department of Culture includes music, art, dance. So we met in this beautiful old building, um, sitting around in lovely rocking chairs, and uh, they wanted to, they told us a little bit about their project um, in which they're trying to get a degree. Um, right now you can't really get a degree in music, art, or dance, or in the Department of Culture, so they're working on accreditation and curriculum development and so they wanted to know if we were interested in partnering with them if TCC was interested in partnering partnering with them and of course inside I was going yes, yes it took yes. you about one second <laughs> to, to decide but that one I wasn't quite sure what that means and I'm still not sure what that means but hopefully we've started the conversation yeah. and um, you know ideally that might lead to some exchanges where yeah, that would be one of wonderful. us, some of us, would go down and work with their at their university. One of them might come up and work at our right. at our college. So um, there's a lot of potential there. So we'll right. see. Right. Yeah, I think that's really exciting. I, I had an opportunity to uh, meet a journalism professor uh, one morning, you know, and uh, that would be great to be able to yeah. do something like that to to kind of get a relationship going with that university there in Leon, that that particular one. Um, we kind of act like we were working ourselves to death every day that we were there, but we weren't. We, there was, <laughs> we had some fun. There was some fun here and there. Uh, one, one in particular, uh, uh, let's talk about the beach. Going to <laughs> Las Pinatas Beach. That's like oh, one of the most beautiful yeah. places on earth, uh -huh. don't you think? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> when I was fundraising a few times, I got discouraged, and every time I did, I would think about that moment sitting on that beach, like what that would feel like, and it kept me going. So when I finally made it to the beach, it was just like yeah. this peaceful, like, oh, I did it. That, that, was, that was the sixth time I've been there, and those waves, you saw the picture before, it was uh -huh. so powerful. Those, the waves were even going up into the restaurant at, yeah. at times. Yeah. So, uh, but that was a, that's a great day, and... Um, it's a. Uh, it's usually like a Thursday night mm -hmm. deal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the beach is about um, twenty kilometers from uh, west of Leon. You can mm -hmm. see that uh, because of all the volcanoes in Nicaragua, uh, the sand is black, Aww. and so uh, it, it's uh, pretty interesting. There's Emily uh, Williams. She mm -hmm. was a journalism student that went with us. She's and, awesome. And uh, <laughs> took some great pictures. She had a wide-angle lens on her uh, Canon camera and uh, was able to get some really good pictures uh, <laughs> of, of all of us frolicking in the waves there. 
<laughs> and beautiful sunset. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we'll, we'll get to that here yeah. in a second. I hope we do anyway. That but was the end of your yeah. favorite day in the it whole world. It was. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah. the, the part of what made it my favorite day. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that we, uh, we usually stay for the sunsets and, and mm -hmm. then uh, head on back to Leon. But that is always uh, one of the students' favorite trips is to uh, go over to that, that beach. Let me, let me ask, because I, I thought the trip was very successful, and we've talked about it you know, quite a bit, but um, do any of y'all have any ideas about how you might enhance future trips? It I seems do. to get better every year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, uh, students amaze me. Uh, they're so inspiring to work with, so thank you guys thank for that. You. But uh, I would say more fine artists. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I really have a lot of respect for the art of music, and I it definitely should always be there. <laughs> um, but I, what I like about fine arts is like if, if you have like a stick and some dirt, you can still create. And so having more fine art, I think, would be awesome. That would just expand that um, different ways of expressing yourself, music and art. I just think that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it would be really great to have more instruments with us, different mm -hmm. kinds of instruments yeah. so they can mm -hmm. really get a feel mm -hmm. for more things. And then I would love to include dance at some point. I, I think that would say, be amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm because they, they were always dancing, these kids, and they mm -hmm. love to dance, and they dance so well already. It would be fun to teach them, and maybe they could teach us a little bit. Yeah, we had a, um, we had a little dance show That's for right. us mm -hmm. that, that they did. They were in traditional Nicaraguan dress, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was really good. It went on and on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And that's a relatively <coughs> new organization that Chilo is working with the young people in that dance club. Um, and so that's one of the the areas of growth that we s have seen in Chakraseka just in the last couple of years of, of them mm -hmm. developing a traditional dance club, which is great. Mm -hmm. So we could add dance. You going back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> I, know. I knew the answer. <laughs> so, um, have we touched on everything? Is there anything that you'd like to talk about that we haven't uh, really covered? Um, I would like to just kind of add, like, um, on a personal level, like, mm -hmm. getting to go um, on this trip is a huge part of just my education. Like, I came back and I, I had learned so many things about myself that I didn't even know. And I just felt, I just feel more confident and more awesome like <laughs> since I got <laughs> since I got back and just being able to like make friends in another culture mm -hmm. and know that I actually I have friends in Nicaragua and and I think it made me probably a better global citizen as well like I just can't even um, quantify all the different ways that this benefited myself and the culture and the community that mm -hmm. I got to go visit and my friends and my even my kids have benefited from me going on this mm -hmm. trip so yeah, I think it's it's been an amazing experience, and it continues to blossom even as after I've gotten home. Oh yeah, I feel the same way. Just like knowing that I can go to a country where I, I don't know anyone, I don't speak the language, and I can bring something with me that I can give to the children there—just music—and they can take it with them, and they have it now. Mm -hmm. They have something that they can mm -hmm. take with that, and just knowing that we made it through, and we found our <laughs> way around, and we made friends, and I feel like I could do anything now that I've come back. Everything seems a lot easier. Yeah, it does, <laughs> like for real. It really, everything does, everything that used to really stress me out now, I'm like, eh. <laughs> well, I, I have noticed though, uh, through, through continuing to go back uh, time and again, uh, you can make pretty fast friends in, in, oh, yes. uh, in Nicaragua. Uh -huh. and, and uh, and it's kind of it's so good to see them, but at the same time, you get really emotional whenever you got to yeah. say goodbye to them, and you mm -hmm. think, oh, I don't know these people five days, you know. Like right. That. But it's re it's really true. You become, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, um, a smile uh, is a universal language, mm -hmm. and and you become real fast friends with those mm -hmm. folks. Yep. Oh yeah. Some of the translators mm -hmm. and some yeah. of the musicians there, they're like. My family in Nicaragua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even okay. if we don't see each other for a whole year, whenever we came back this year, I promised Otoniel I'd learn more Spanish, and I didn't. And he <laughs> said he would learn more English, and he didn't. He didn't. We looked at each other and we're like, ah, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We're in the 12 months. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was great to see him, though. It was just like reuniting with a 
best friend. Yeah. yeah. Like no time had passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it's just amazing that you're, I just feel so full, filled with joy to mm -hmm. play music with our friends in Nicaragua mm -hmm. and work on scheduling the next day's events and performing in concerts and working with the kids. It's, it's amazing. That's what draws us to go back, yeah. I mm -hmm. think. And the other amazing thing for me was is to watch my students, our students, right. change in one week's time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being pushed out of their comfort zone physically, mentally, psychologically, and mm -hmm. rising to the occasion even when they might feel hot and tired and yeah. not, not good. And it does change your lives and mm -hmm. changes my lives, mm -hmm. my life. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. Very amazing. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank I appreciate you. it very much. Thanks for having us. And I want to thank you for watching the Creativity Channel. Be watching for two other TCC Team Nicaragua programs, one with our nursing team and one with our dental hygiene team. See you again soon.